Good morning, everyone. It's good to know you're out there. Good morning, Bear. Good morning, Pastor. How's everything? Good. How are you doing? Oh, man. It's a wonderful morning. It is. It is. It's it's a wonderful morning. And maybe it's not morning where you are, but we want to take a, a moment and help help one another grow. So we're going to look at some scripture. We're going to hope to encourage you. We challenge you and encourage you to look up the Word of God. Um I like being a disciple. How about you? Oh uh, yeah, it, it's a really good job. Even <laughs> it's a great paying gig, right? It is. It uh, is yeah. The benefits are good. Do you know that when you Eternal. <laughs> health benefits are great? Yeah, health benefits <laughs> are great. A man healing Low deductible. That's it's right. Been paid for. That's right. <laughs> You're on a roll, aren't you? <laughs> So what scripture is on your heart this morning? Because part of our goal here is to just simply dive into God's word and let the word of God transform our thinking. I'm personally learning something about, you know, we talked last week briefly about thoughts that come in. Well, and if we get there with that, those thoughts that come in, do we have a bouncer at the door? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you have a bouncer? And what does your bouncer look like? Sure. Well, my bouncer looks like Philippians chapter 4. Oh, that's good. No, no, no. Oh. I want to hear from you. Oh. You had said you wanted to share a little bit out of uh, John 3, 16. Oh, and yeah. So John 3, 16, um, I mean, everybody knows the scripture. It's on bumper stickers. It's kind of like the, I don't know what you call it. but it, I wouldn't very, get, I, it's, it's just a, a well-known scripture. scripture. Yeah, there see, you go. I, there you go. I see what he's saying without <laughs> him saying it. So, um. So what I like about it, just John 3.16, um, what stood out this morning, um, was that there's two words in there. So I'll read it real quick. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And what I really like about those, or I love that scripture, I love all scripture, but is that the word gave, mm -hmm. right, that God gave. Yes. Right? Satan didn't take from God, right? Mm -mm. Even whenever he tested Job, he had to go ask for permission, right? So God gave his son to us. Yeah, right? absolutely. And and then the other word that I love in the Bible that's throughout the Bible is I in, in. Abide in me, oh, in yeah. Jesus. You know, in is a great word. I love that it has to be in and through Christ. And as you were saying, so, yeah. I'm assuming my bouncer's Christ, just like yours is. <laughs> Holy Spirit, which is the same thing. No, 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 oh, no, okay. no, no. You didn't. You didn't uh, hear me that one. <laughs> I was trying to, right, right, to right. Go, so no, your my bouncer is Philippians four. Go, oh, go to yeah, Philippians so. four. I, I wasn't sure I wanted to go there just yet, but I do now. Um, last week we talked about how you know you wake up, you have these thought processes that you didn't necessarily ask for, um, whether it's fear, doubt, unbelief, whatever. Um, so how do we uh, turn those things around? What do we do with them? Well, in in uh, 1 Corinthians 10.5, uh, it says that we're to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So I began to look at it, and one of my mentors was helping us the other day, understanding that if and and I didn't grow up in the, like in the um, like a biker or anything like that. I grew up in the church, and so there's some things. I, yeah, I know. There's some things that I just can't necessarily relate to, but I have seen movies, I have heard testimonies, and things like that. So I kind of understand the whole bouncer thought process. Never had to encounter one because I've not gone somewhere that the, it's the guy at the door makes mm -hmm. sure that bad people don't go in. There you go. Yeah. He's the guy at and the bad. door that makes sure only those invited That's can come in. in. Yeah. So if we have a bouncer at our mind, mm -hmm. and they a, a thought comes in, and the little bouncer guy opens the little window and goes, "Who are you?" And that thought says, "Oh, uh, I'm fear." So what do you do? You, you shut the door. Mm -hmm. Don't know. You you look at your list. Who's invited? Philippians well, 4, Philippians right? four is my list of what's invited. So in Philippians four four it says, "Rejoice always, or rejoice in the Lord always." And again I say, "Rejoice." Now here's a good one. L verse five: Let your gentleness be known to all men. 
I know. What a challenge. Let our gentleness be known to all men. That's challenging because we do want to be tough. We want to be strong. We want to be confident. And yet, we can do that with gentleness. Jesus did. I mean, yeah, he threw the the money changing tables over and and there wasn't a lot what we would per- perceive as gentle and yet confidence. And so there is a difference. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, let that sink in for a minute. The Lord is at hand. He's right here. There's three of us in this room. The scripture says where two or more agree, where two or more come together to come together. There I am in the midst. And and we're going to get to that later. Probably not today. Okay, so verse 6. Be anxious for everything that is on the news. Oh, no, no. Be anxious for for nothing. nothing. (laughs) Whoa. I've been casting all my anxiety (laughs) onto the Lord, and I'm supposed to be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. Nothing. But but by but in everything Everything. by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So there now the last couple weeks we've been talking on our Sunday service about thanksgiving and how do we really be thankful how do we <laughs> that is the kid it be how do we be thankful and um so thanks oh thanksgiving you <laughs> it took me a minute it landed over here okay with thanksgiving let your request be known be made known unto god now now look at verse seven and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through, that's the same word, in, like in, through Christ Jesus. Now, we, just, now we haven't even got to the checklist yet. Oh. We're just building up. Oh. Oh. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So here's the bouncer. This is the bouncer. This is, but is, are these things active in your life? Are you... Um, um, letting your gentleness, are you rejoicing in the Lord? So when you wake up and these thoughts of, okay, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got this honeydew list, I got this falling apart, this guy's upset, this business transaction, oh, I can't forget this. There comes a point that we got to go, whoa, stop. I am going to rejoice in the Lord and then actually take time to rejoice in the Lord. Give thanks. That's what we're talking about in here about giving thanks. When do we take those things and turn them around and say, no, I'm thankful. I'm, I am thankful and express that thanksgiving. And we're going to learn some more about that as we learn more about praise and worship. Now, verse 8, finally, brethren. Now, verse 7 said, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds. So it's the peace of God that guards your heart and mind. To have the peace of God up in front of it, um, it says that uh, be anxious for nothing and everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be be made known unto God. Now, verse 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, if you just start with verse that or just that one thing, what's coming at you? Is it true? Well, sometimes we don't even know if it's true. Think about it. I mean, somebody told us uh, a reliable source. Were you there? Were they there? Mushrooms are good. Was it was it on the internet and that makes it true? I mean, right? You know, which news channel reported on it? Does that even make it true? And good thing, good point on that is how do you know that we're truth, right? Because we're backing it up with the word of God. There, there that's it. It's There's kind of our our thoughts. No, this is well, God's we word. That's truth. This is when you know a reputable source as it goes back and balances out with the Bible. So, so I'm gonna we're gonna lead through a list, but at the end of the list it says meditate on these things. At the end of verse eight, meditate on these things. So we're to meditate on so those thought processes are they true? Whatever things are noble. Um, another word for noble. Um, honorable. Huh? Honorable. There you go. Whatever things are just. Whatever things are pure. 
whatever things are lovely. Some of us need to take time just to figure out what this list means. And if we meditate on the list to find out what needs to be coming through and that we're open the door, we'd just leave the door shut for most things. We would shut off most things in our it. lives, <laughs> lock the door. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I was going to say go outside, build a thing where it can't even, there, there's no door. <laughs> there's no door. Um, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. Now, good report, we just lost most news outlets and social media right there. If anything ha is a virtue and is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So when we have that moment and we get anxiety, because anxiety can come, but it's not from God. It's not designed by God. And like you said, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for us. That's actually a huge step with of humility. Yes. Humility involved. You think you can do it on your own. You don't need help. And you know, we even have scripture for that. Yeah. I could do all things through Christ yeah. who strengthens yeah. me. Yeah. But he didn't. This isn't. Yeah, yeah he. <laughs> this isn't for him. Yeah, yeah. So that and that's absolutely true. So when we think about asking for help and being humble, there's something I've learned the last six or seven months is that there's there's a spectrum uh, and or a, a, a gauge of humility. And it's basically like there's false humility out there, mm. right? and that's a sin, right? I mean, false humility is really like I'm not worthy. I can't ask for mm -hmm. help. I, God doesn't want me to have this, and it's just this really bad, bad theology and teaching out mm -hmm. there. It's just terrible. And the other side is completely I'm Jesus Christ walking on the planet. Humility. Right, right, and right, that's right. Way false humility, right? Like. You, like Whoa! Like, well, and you got to have a balance, as the scripture says. An unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord, and you got to have humility. Well, know, to, pride is a is 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 a two ended stick, and I, and that's how I heard. Two ended stick. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, in in pride, you have you have two ends, okay. and on one end of pride, we're all aware of, and that's that arrogance that that you know. Oh well, I know. You know, humble yourself. Don't be so arrogant. So yeah. we're all of uh, uh, we understand that end of pride. What we don't understand is the other end of pride, which is false humility. Which is I can do nothing. I'm not worthy. I'm not. I'm not able. Nothing good in me. God wants well, me to have a purple dinosaur. Uh, a purple dinosaur. Yeah, I mean, and if that's false. I don't know where he gets these purple <laughs> dinosaur things, but it's a false humility because. Really, anything that goes beyond, if if God's word says it about you, that's the truth. Amen. If God's word doesn't say it about you, just stay away from it. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, mm -hmm. is Philippians oh, 4 as well, Christ. through Christ. So that scripture is a very dangerous scripture if you mistranslate it or oh, interpret yes. it, like all scriptures, if you mm -hmm. interpret it. It's very dangerous because they go like, well, I can, you know, I can walk through fire, right? Well, but he didn't tell you to walk yeah, through like, fire. You better be led by the Holy Spirit, right? Well, or something crazy. And to really be humble, right, to be strong enough to ask for help. And, and when the anxiety comes or the fear comes, right, you have to be in Christ, right, to give that to him, right? Mm -hmm. It's a relationship. It's like being right here. Mm -hmm. We're in a conversation yes. right now. And we we're in here. fellowship. We're Two in fellowies. fellows in a boat. <laughs> See, I'm not the only kid here. <laughs> yeah, which, by Two. the way, God says to be like children. That's right. Yeah. Two fellows in a ship. Yeah. We're yeah. we're we're sh so, we're fellowshipping. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I can do all things um, through Christ. Or what's it? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. But there's also a scripture that says. Your strength is perfected in my weakness. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. that? Yes, I yes. Paul or one of the, I don't know who it was, but it is in the Bible. It says, yes. When you are weak, I am strong. There you go. Right, and and it takes a lot to admit that you're weak. To say, hey, I don't have the answers. Right. I don't know what I'm doing. Right? Well, remember, I need help, Lord. Jesus, Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me to do, and I only say what the Father has told me to say. Now, Christ lives in us. Where are we on that scale? 
Exactly, but we can get there. We are to live there. Be, the Holy Spirit was sent to lead and guide us into all truth. So literally, that word in again. That I know, right? Um, in John 17, when Jesus says that we would be so one with him and so one with the Father that the world may know that God sent Jesus. Now, for that to happen, that that requires us individually learning to renew our mind, learning to hear the voice of God, and then doing what the voice of God says. The fear that I find that so many people are afraid of is they don't want to hear God's voice. They think God is just going to beat them up, thrash them, uh, rebuke them, and all these things because they man has not really comprehended. One, God punished Jesus for all our sin. And when we're born again, we are made new. We are a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And so, and, and, and we're, I'll have to qualify this a little more, I'm sure. God is not concerned with our sin as much as we are or the devil is. The devil wants us looking at our sin because we're not looking at Christ. He wants us to be focused on our less because then we're not focused on who Christ God made us and our new creation and the word of God and the ability to overcome. S to try to help with that, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to even, how did God lead Jesus? Oh, well, that's easy because the Bible clearly says that um, Jesus uh, gave two new commandments. And he says, uh, number one, he goes, love God with all your heart, soul, strength. And might or mind, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, mind. Mind. Um, and then go love your brother as you love yourself. Um, love your neighbor love as your yourself. As you love yourself. And, um, and then he said, all the other commandments, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Hang on those two, which is a pretty important thing. Um, and so the first one is very important because um, the way that God taught Jesus, right, was first of all, you can't just say verbally you love God, mm -mm. right? It doesn't work that way. He says, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. So I'm going to tell you right now, there's churches out there, people out there that say they love God, and they are doing bad things that literally go against the word of God. I mean, it says, don't do this. Mm -hmm. They're doing it, and they're saying, I love God. That's false humility. That is real false humility right there because they say they love God, but they're not obeying God. Jesus, the example of love on this planet, literally was being taught by God through the Holy Spirit, right, for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. More than that. Well, because no, he was being led by the Spirit from from day one. Correct. When he was... He was there whenever the foundation was built. Well, yes. No, okay, less than day one. <laughs> uh, I want to... Oh, what I'm looking for, though, is, is how, when feet. Jesus was literally walking on the earth, yeah. okay, in his flesh form, yeah, yeah. okay? So he became man. Yeah. We understand that. And if you don't, we can get to that. God became or Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. He literally walked with God, heard the Father, and did what the Father told him to do. Now, we know and we like to focus on the fact that, well, Jesus never sinned, and we've sinned. But in Christ, we have not sinned, okay? We're made new. So the goal here is, what was Jesus doing so that he did not sin? Well, first of all, he was bouncing. He had a bouncer. He had a bouncer. Oh, there you go. There you go. Keeping all those stupid yes. things from coming in. He was in communion yeah. with the Father constantly. He was constantly, he pulled away and pray, but he constantly, he, when the woman, uh, they brought the woman in adultery, caught in adultery, he didn't just start declaring everything he knew about the word of God. They'd have been there forever. Mm -hmm. He stopped. He listened. Father, what do you want me to say? He started writing in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Now, we can speculate what he wrote in the dirt, not the point. The point is, he didn't just say what came up. 
He waited for it to literally come up and and hear from God and then obey and say the very things the Father told him to say. When do we get there? We get there when we learn to be still and know that I am God. When we learn to listen in, in the little things. It has to start in the little things. It has to start in the, the smallest way. Um, as we, faith in a uh, yep, yep, he'll give him faith for more. We have to learn to just listen to the Father, and follow Him, that's a good, and then that's a good point. That's something maybe the next episode is how to hear the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's, oh, that's a good question. Actually, I would have liked that when I was younger. Right, it took me a couple of years to get that information. So maybe that's something that we can. Take we can over, well, we I'll can. I can give. We can give you. Insane. We can give you the 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 first clue. Yeah. The voice of the Holy Spirit well, is going to sound like. Tune in next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> we'll give you the answer next. <laughs> week. Yeah. Cliffhanger. No. So he's he's trying not to let me say this. The Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. Yes. The voice of God is heard in His Word. If your face is not in His Word. It's over in Facebook Mm -hmm. and not your face in the book. Mm -hmm. You're not going to hear the word of God. He's been working. He's trying to get that in for the last three episodes. You got it in this time. It's a great job. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, let us pray. Yes. Father, we love you. And Father, I thank you for the opportunity to just come together with my brother and brothers and sisters that are tuning in. Lord, we do. We all have struggles come at us. We all have thoughts and and mindsets, and we have such negativity coming at us. And and Lord, we we know in this simple that we can just shut the TV off, shut the news media off, um, and and that will, in some ways, stop it. In in a big way, stop it. But Lord, help us to renew our minds. Help us to apply Romans twelve two that we would be transformed in our thinking by the word of God. Lord, help us that when these thoughts, these processes, these negative things come to our mind, that we open up the word of God, we go to Philippians chapter 4, and we allow Philippians chapter 4 to transform our lives, transform our minds, transform our heart, so that we can renew our mind, we can walk with you, we can hear you, and we can be obedient to you. We know you have promised once again, and we stand on this promise, that my sheep hear my voice, that you know us and we follow you. I thank you, Lord. And if anybody out here has never believed in their heart, confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, I pray today they would. I pray that right here, right now, they would answer the call of God. They would confess Jesus as Lord and receive you as their personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you, and we'll see you next time.